Yes, you. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Uh, I have a more serious question, actually, that okay. doesn't really relate that much to the good stuff. Uh, uh, you originally started off as a disc jockey and working in radio, right? Right. What, uh, I'm guessing that was what you had wanted to do as a career beforehand. I did. Uh, what actually prompted you to go in that direction? What made you want to go into radio in the first place? Oh, to radio? Okay. Um, I was living in a small town in North Carolina, Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I was 14 years old. And I was inspired by George Carlin, God rest his soul, who in 1975... So, um, yeah, I'm living in that little town in North Carolina in 1975, and I'm 14 years old, and I listened to his album, a FM and AM. And he did a bunch of disc jockey-like characters. And I used to, you know, at school, I would, you know, be, wonderful, why the radio? And my friends at school all said, God, you sound better than the DJs on that radio station. You should go down there and get a job. So one Saturday, I went down to the radio station, and I met the program director there who went by the name of Jimi Hendrix. I know, right? And I said, uh, I want to be on the radio. He goes, uh, yeah, what, what makes you think you should be on the radio? And I started doing wonderful white on the radio. He goes, oh, yeah, that's not bad. So he sent me down to their production room in the basement and told me to talk on some records. He goes, you need to learn how to post records. I said, what's that? You know what posting is? Talking up to the post of the record, that means talking on the beginning of a record up until where the vocals start. And by then you're done. I got really, really good at it. Yeah. I spent like three, four hours down in that studio talking on Barry Manilow records. <laughs> hey, it's the 70s, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and the Bay City Rollers. Anyway, uh, he came down at the end of uh, the day and listened to the tape and said, Okay, you're on this Saturday night. So at 14 years old, I had a weekend uh, radio show. And I did three or four weekends, and he said, You know what, we want to put you on full-time Monday through Friday. Ask your parents if they'll let you do it. <laughs> and my parents said, Keep your grades up, and sure, you know, uh, after dinner, your father will drive you to the radio station. And at midnight, when you sign it off the air, your oldest brother will pick you up every night. And, uh, you know, if you think you can handle it. And so I did. And then I did radio for 30 years, 30 plus years. And I still, yeah, and I still go back on the air every once in a while. There's a radio station in Los Angeles called K-Earth 101, where I most recently work. And uh, from time to time, I'll go back and do a radio job just for fun. I don't really have the time for it. But that, that's what led me into voice acting. I was a wacky morning radio guy and production director for many years. And I used to do character voices for other shows, like... Uh, in Los Angeles a few years back, I was the producer for George Lopez. When he, Before he got on TV, he had a radio show. And I did the character voices and produced all the comedy bits for George Lopez. And then Sinbad replaced him. You know who Sinbad is? Yeah. So I, I did voices for him and, and produced stuff for him. And way back in the day, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mark and Brian. They're a big Los Angeles morning show. But when they were in Birmingham, Alabama many years ago, I was their producer and did character voices for them. And that all led me into voice acting. I had to do a lot of voices over the years. And I thought radio was going to be my thing. I thought I was going to be a radio star and make big money and be famous for that. But then companies like Clear Channel and Viacom and Cumulus came in. And, and when deregulation happened for the FCC, they were allowed to buy as many radio stations as they wanted, it seemed. And uh, terrestrial radio in this country went straight to hell. Maybe you've noticed, radio sucks. Yeah. Yeah. If you think it's just in your town, it's not. Radio sucks everywhere. And the, and the generic disc jockeys and music that you hear over and over again on the radio station in your town, it's the same exact guy and the same exact songs in San Diego, and Oklahoma City, and Portland, Oregon, and Bangor, Maine, and Boston, Massachusetts, and Birmingham, Alabama, everywhere. It's generic radio, and it ruined my career. I actually printed hundreds of bumper stickers that said, Clear Channel ruined my career. Yeah! And mailed them out to disc jockeys all over the country who lost their jobs. And they were bent. So, sorry, I could go on forever about being pissed off about terrestrial radio, but that's not about what we're here for. So, next question from the gentleman in the hat.